Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering the art of animal art. In today's video, as I paint this two-part mini piggy painting using Chocola paint, I'm going to be talking to you about how to stop comparing your work to that of other artists that are a bit more experienced than you. All right, guys, let's get started. If you would like to access the traceable outline for this, as well as the real-time tutorial, I'll be adding that in a few days to my online Animal Art Masterclass, link down below. Now, I bet you already know, because we hear about it all the time with social media, that comparing yourself, whether it's your artwork, or your career, or your parenting skills, what have you, can be a negative thing. But I want to actually talk about how we can channel it into a very positive thing that can benefit us in the long run. I'm going to give you three journal questions that can help you determine whether this is a healthy, beneficial comparison or one that's going to hurt you over time. Question number one, why have you chosen that artist or that group of artists to compare your work to? This means what is it about that artist's artwork or process that you envy or admire? Now I kind of gave you a little hint there. Do you appreciate and feel inspired by their work? Or do you feel inadequate or almost a sense of pain associated with their work? Question number two, what exactly can you gain from their artwork and process? Maybe you love how that artist is so authentic with themselves in their artwork and it inspires you to be the same. Or maybe you feel like you want to judge yourself because you don't paint like them or work as fast as them or apply colors like they do. And the last journal question, question number three, is that artist or group of artists helping you right now in your artist journey? Maybe you just started painting this year or maybe you've been painting and drawing for many, many years. It might not be wise for you to expect yourself to paint like someone who's been doing this for 10 years when you just started. For some, that can be encouraging and inspiring and it can actually help push them towards better. But others, it might be hurting them and not actually improving their artwork. Answering all three of these questions objectively as opposed to judging ourselves and others will truly help us be effective and advancing forward in our art. As artists, we feel so deeply and so passionately, and we're prone to make these comparisons because, well, it helps us improve our art. Comparisons is a good thing because it helps us make those improvements where we need to. But this is why I journal every morning since COVID all started, because I need to constantly step back out of my feelings and really look at the situation with an objective outlook. In my own artist journey, what really helped me was pinpointing and writing down what I really liked about certain artists and their work. I love color. I love pet portraits and wildlife paintings that are mostly realistic, but they have a touch of that abstract style to them as well. So these are examples of things that I made goals to strive to do better in my own art. Now it's really important we also do the flip side of that. What kinds of things make us feel envious or bad about ourselves when we look at their work or their process? Sometimes there's hidden wounds in ourselves that cause us to feel this way that might not affect someone else. Pinpointing these wounds and being very honest with ourselves can help us view our own art in a different way. I'll give an example of this that I really had to work through for a couple years. So growing up in a family of engineers and scientists, art wasn't really a big part of their lives. They didn't really understand it because they are more black and white thinkers. So you know that kind of furniture and wood signs that are intentionally worn out, sanded and beat up to make it look like it's old? Well, that just seemed so outrageous to me and so ugly to me. I just couldn't understand that people would call that art. But I had this idea in my head that the only art worth creating and selling is photographic, perfect, realistic art. It wasn't until I worked at an art shop slash school that sold Annie Sloan paint and classes to help you paint this kind of French rustic style furniture. 
So I got to see customers come in with this old, tattered, beat up furniture, and then they applied beautiful, vibrant colors of green or duck egg or all these funky names. Then they would let that dry, paint another coat, let that dry. And then they would apply either a dark glaze that kind of made it look like it was almost rusty or dirty, or a clear glaze that really brought out the vibrancy of the color. And then after that, they would sand it down in some areas to the point where it's sanded to the wood. Then if you wanted to, you can add some gold leaf or some copper or silver on it or just to embellish certain parts of it. Some of these people never picked up a brush before in their life. And then others were more advanced artists. It was ultimately the process that transformed my view of art. Over and over again, I was seeing how brand new artists all the way through to advanced level artists were having fun and creating very unique, personal, and relatable pieces of furniture that they transformed by themselves with just a little bit of instruction. It really showed me how being creative is an act that pulls out the good and the bad and just looks at it with a grace, loving, and accepting view. It's like great art has the ugly and the not so ugly in it. And that's kind of what we like about it. The imperfections along with the wonderful, beautiful parts. It was this small yet profound mental shift that really helped me embrace my own art and then further improve. So while I still try to keep my paintings abstract and whimsical, I still like to make them look realistic as well. And that's my preference. It doesn't have to be yours. Art is all about being who you are and that's it, period. What you like is what you like. In closing, the last point I wanna make is that it's not necessarily that people are born with certain gifts or talents, even though that may be part of it. I think the thing that's most important that we have to remind ourselves is that they have good habits. They have good habits that help them be a better artist. They have good habits that help them be a better fireman or doctor or mother. If you are practicing the right techniques, you will improve in the way that you want. If you're practicing the wrong things, that's what they call insanity, then you're not going to progress. So it's so important to have the right habits that help you move forward in your goals incrementally. So not big, huge steps. It's just small little steps that add up and compound one another. All right, guys, if this was encouraging and helped you, make sure you subscribe for more artist tips and tricks and tutorials for stress relief. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.